Yeah. Got it, which was good. But then they have like, what are they playing? Three in the next four or something like that? Yeah, they have they three and four nights. They get busy. Schedule. Well, they've got the most games left. We'll go over the schedule too. The most games left, the most games against teams above 500, the most road games. The schedule will be difficult, but to help us uh, tackle that and many other things league wide, let's bring in our guy from the Athletic, Sam Amick, joining us here. Sam, how are you? I'm good, gentlemen. How are you? Great. Are you? Uh, is this a school trip? You on the on the way to school? <laughs> uh, we're leaving in a moment. We we were wrapping up the uh, the morning breakfast, and then we're heading for the door. Nice. Are you are you the cook of the breakfast, Sam, or is the missus? I am. I oh. am. I'm, I'm the egg guy in the morning. Um, you know, we can do them fried. We can do them scrambled. We can do them over easy. You know, whatever you like. Green eggs and Sam. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Jason <laughs> Ross is on the, fire. Uh, my my sources. My sources tell me I have a less flattering nickname than that one that uh, that y'all might have just been talking about. What did I miss here? Sexy oh, Sam? Sexy How's Sam. How's that not flattering? <laughs> that, that's actually ultimately flattering. We said that was voted on by the fans of The Athletic Sexiest Writer for that publication. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, I'm in. I'm in. There you go. Well, Sam, basketball is back. We'll, we'll uh, get into the Kings here in a moment, but we were talking about Quinn Snyder and the Hawks. I know we've talked a couple different times about Atlanta – uh, that seems to be a team in a little bit of dysfunction, disarray, wherever we're going to go. Quinn Snyder, I think, could have a lot of different jobs. Is this going to be a, a marriage that works if, in fact, that Quinn Snyder gets this job? Yeah, I'm curious to see if they get it over the finish line. It seems like it is, like you said, Jay, you know, moving quickly. The, the backdrop to me is interesting in terms of Quinn and, and his last stop in Utah, you know, because I covered that situation really closely and know for a fact that, you know, one of the main concerns for him on his way out the door was the way things had changed in their front office. You had uh, Dennis Lindsay leaving the Jazz. You had uh, Danny Ainge coming into the Jazz. You know, a guy named Justin Zanuck was part of both front office regimes. But the point is that Quinn reached a point where he, I don't think he was really thrilled with the way his voice was being heard on the roster anymore in Utah. So I wonder in Atlanta, where you've got a young front office, pretty inexperienced group with Landry Field leading the way, uh, knowing Quinn a little bit, I feel like I've got to imagine he's, he's going to want to have some stay on roster construction in addition to the coaching. So for me, that's kind of where my focus is right now. How do you think he's going to relate to Trey Young? Because obviously we saw Lloyd Pierce couldn't get through to Trey Young. Seemed like Nate McMillan, you know, more of an old school coach, couldn't get through to Trey Young. Do you think Quinn Snyder might finally be that guy that is like the coach that can get through to Trey Young and will have Trey Young's attention? I, I could see it being a decent pairing. Um, Quinn had a good rapport with Donovan Mitchell, you know, all the way until the end and a good relationship now. They, you know, to give you an idea when Donovan was going through his stuff in Utah and then eventually, you know, we thought get traded to the Knicks, but then getting traded to Cleveland, like he and, and uh, Quinn were in touch all the way through. And, you know, that kind of speaks to Quinn's wiring and his personality. So, I, you know, I could, you know, with your Trey, you reach a point maturity-wise, hopefully, where you realize that now the spotlight is even more on you because, you know, you got coaches just coming and going like this, the guys you mentioned. And the narratives with both guys, you know, it was just widely known that they had issues. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to, even if Quinn's not the absolute perfect fit for him, he's going to have to find a way to make this work. Because if he doesn't, then I think we start talking about, you know, Trey's future in Atlanta. Sam Amick joining us from The Athletic. Sam, as far as the league-wide look for you, someone that covers kind of all things, what's going to get most of your attention, what, this last six, seven weeks or so? What are you really locking in on? The Kings, that's it. Yes, he <laughs> said it. <laughs> no, it's you know it is going to be super interesting to see them down the stretch. But they're one of many teams that's trying to finish strong, trying to make the playoffs. Uh, the parity in the league is is going to make the last twenty twenty five games, I think, really fun because you know everything is so tight. Uh, so there's that. I mean, there's the the Kevin Durant debut in Phoenix uh, report of the but next Wednesday. 20 games. If he starts that night, they have 20 games to get it right, to get chemistry and to be a power in the West. As you guys know, the one thing we always forget to mention is like midseason trades, you know, historically don't uh, compel or inspire champions, you know, like Rasheed Wallace, um, you know, is one of the few examples 
there's one other one that always comes to mind, but like it just doesn't happen very much. So even though he's Kevin freaking Durant, this you know incredible uh, all time great, um, you know we'll see how that goes. You know I, a lot more from there. The Warriors and their their last stand here, and the idea that you know are they really going to go down like this, and and then you know is the dynasty over this summer when they end up likely having to break things up if if they don't succeed. Um, we could keep going from there. I, I'm excited. There's, it's going to be a lot down the stretch. Sam, one of those uh, teams that I'm really looking at uh, down the stretch is the LA Clippers. I, I really liked what they did at the trade deadline. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard's been playing out of his mind since coming back and you know being relatively healthy, so to speak. How do you see the Russell Westbrook dynamic fitting in there? Man, I, I, that one, Jam. I'm glad you mentioned it, but I, I'm so curious to see it because you know there's just nothing better than certain personalities that decide, you know, okay, no, we can make this work. You know, even though the team, you know, in your city just saw the reason that, you know, it didn't work. Um, you know, Paul George in particular is very close with Russ and clearly believes that he's going to give them something that they didn't have. And I get it. You know, I'm, I looked at it yesterday, you know, Norm Powell has been having a great year and it's like, man, you're going to, Norm Powell's going to get less shots, you know, because Russell Westbrook's there. Um, even, even Terrence, man, guys like that, you know, we'll see, um, maybe I'm wrong. You know, it does help that as Russ talked about yesterday, you know, it, he just reached a point with the Lakers and this is kind of me paraphrasing what he said, but like he was asked about being wanted and it was very evident at the end. He was not wanted in the Lakers locker room and he is wanted in this Clippers locker room. Uh, but you know, I don't know. Um, you know, I thought the Lakers fit with Westbrook would work. When he first got there, I was wrong, so I'm not about to say this is going to work. Sam Amick joining us again. All guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Sam, as far as the Kings go, 25 games to go. Schedule is tough. They've got a little cushion here, but we know what the goal is to, to break that long streak or that long drought. Um, I guess from this perspective, you, you're tight to this team, and you've covered this team a long time. You know what they're all about. How, how stressful do you anticipate the final I don't know, couple of games being for the Kings in this very competitive Western conference. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Um, they have, I believe one of the, if not the toughest schedules down the stretch. Um, and on top of that, they have had, you know, the, the, uh, and I actually learned this at all-star weekend. They, they are number one in, or I guess maybe number 30 in, uh, in games missed due to injury this year. They've been incredibly healthy. So those two things, you, know, you feel like, you know, something's got to give and, and not for the better, but uh, that's not what Kings fans want to hear. Uh, they got to win the games that are gettable. And that means tonight with Portland in town, you know, and, and as you go through that schedule, there's just, there's a lot of tough games. And I mean, I will say, I like where it seems like where their heads are at, you know, having talked to Sabonis going into the break, Having read some of Mike Brown's comments today, uh, our Anthony Slater had a piece with Mike looking at the home stretch. Um, you know, the organization's in a really good place. Had a, a brunch out at All Star Weekend that, that uh, you know, got to get the vibe out there. And, and you know, they're feeling good, but they know that it's going to be a tough stretch. So, very curious to see for sure. Sam, this is such a unique angle for Kings fans because it has been 16 years. And one of the little subtopics there is, you know, the Kings actually possibly being in the buyout market, so to speak. Uh, any names that you're seeing that are currently left on the market that you think would be a good fit in Sacramento? I'm not. If you guys have any to throw my way, I'm more than happy to break it down. But, you know, I, I feel like in general, you know, they've been protective of this group. I keep using that word. At the trade deadline, they were protective of, you know, everybody but, you know, the Terrence Davises and Rashawn Holmes and, and even Terrence, you know, like they weren't going to give him up or nothing. He, he, he gives a punch off the bench every so often. Um, buyout wise, you know, and unless I've missed it, I'm not seeing a lot of buzz about specific guys coming their way. You know, they, they could use size. Obviously they could use anybody who can, who can uh, provide a stop because defensively they continue to struggle. But, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of had the sense that this was going to be their group. Uh, one guy I just want to throw your way, as you said, and I, I thought he could be a guy, you know, in a 8, 9, 10 guy off the bench, gives you some wing depth, and also plays a little defense and can shoot the three, is Stanley Johnson, I thought, would have actually been a decent, you know, buyout candidate here, just, you know, even if it's just in an emergency situation. Sure. Yeah, and a guy who, honestly, I mean, you know, former lottery pick and 
and who is desperate in the kinds of ways that they could help a team like this. Uh, you know, Stanley's got a good reputation as far as, and, and at least to my knowledge and in my experience, being a good locker room guy um, and, and a guy who has obviously still got something to prove. It just hasn't worked out for him. So I wouldn't be mad at that. You know, a little bit of shooting, a little bit of defense, but, you know, we'll see. Sam, one last thought on, you know, being at the All-Star game. I don't know if, what, three quarters of a season can can shake loose a narrative, but we know what's gone on here. And so can the implement of uh, adding of Mike Brown, having two All-Stars, Keegan Murray, just the the way it's going right now in Sacramento, has that done enough to shake that huh, narrative that's been tagged to this team for so many years? Do people nationwide or league-wide, I should say, feel differently about the Kings right now? Yeah, I mean, Jay, the, the key way you finished that question, though, and the problem is that you said right now. Yeah. I mean, yes, right right now they have. You know, it was a it was an absolute king celebration, <clears throat> excuse me, at All-Star Weekend, you know, and, and so they deserve credit for that. That's partly why I wrote the Savannah story. Sorry, guys, I had to clear the throat real quick. No, um, that's why I, I wrote the Savona story is, you know, but – you know, and I, I hate to even say this out loud because it's going to make Kings fans listening get so nervous. But like, if they, you know, if things fell apart, if they don't break the playoff streak, then you know, then you know what the narrative is going to be. If if you look up and and it was all this fun and you know all this frivolity for the uh, vast majority of the season, but they wind up not going to the playoffs for a 17th straight year, that's going to be hard. And and I think we're going to have some drama because. It's, you know, as you guys know, it's the breakdown where, you know, they got to really be pushing and fighting to get a top six spot. They don't want to mess with the playing tournament. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you get in the playing tournament. I mean, that's not breaking the playoff streak. You know, if anything, that's just getting, you know, just, just painfully close uh, if you don't ultimately break through. So, you know, I think they've just got to check that box. For sure. Well, Sam, keep up the great work at The Athletic. We always appreciate our Thursday chats with you. And we, uh, we seen you at the game tonight. I will be out there. Awesome. Uh, hopefully the Blazers are too. I know they yes. got stuck in the snow last night, but uh, yeah, I'll be out. Sexy Sam will be there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Sam. All right, guys. Be good. See, right. See I like that he he's coining himself. Yes. Sexy no, he, I mean, he listen, when someone gives you that nickname, you run with it. Oh, you, you take sprint. it. Yeah, you put that on your business card for sure. We're going to clean up some of the